Hello, Natasha. How are you today? Oh, great to see you. I love the fish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is Paul Palmer and Natasha Todorovic Cowan. Hey. And um, I, I just had to do this um, talk about faking it and, and not faking it just because I like the picture. Because the, <laughs> the picture of the fish with the fin over the back, because I'm a Pisces. <laughs> that made me think. Oh. This all had to do with your horoscope, right, Paul? <laughs> yeah. Well, in some ways, yeah, in some ways, no. It, the, one of the key things that's, um, that's, that's talked about a lot in the pharmaceutical industry is falsified medicines. And Europe's introduced a whole host of measures for, for restricting falsified medicines. And then as a result of Brexit, they've kicked us out and we, we're not allowed to access it anymore. Ooh, that's not good. Um, so you guys have a big problem with uh, fake meds, people imitating meds. Yeah, yeah. Well, wow. it used to be a lot bigger than it is, but they've put a lot of effort into it, a lot of money into it. Um, and everybody's got a lot of training. Um, and they're re required to have the training. They're required to make sure that the whole team um, in the manufacturing or the distribution chain for the pharmaceuticals are actually got a good understanding of what, what a falsified medicine is so that they can spot one. Well, yeah, we just uh, had a woman arrested for um, selling a vaccine that she created that she said was based on stem cells that would um, heal or prevent COVID. And it would never, I mean, I don't know what was in it, but she was giving these uh, this this these vaccines and liquid to folks and it didn't even have stem cells i have no idea what it had in it so it's i think it's a big deal around the world yeah well placebos is a is a standard approach to uh clinical trials um so you do have your your placebo it could be a saline it could be it's actually more common to be a sucrose um unless you've got um potential for diabetics of course uh, right well and that's during clinical trial We're, yeah. so that that's a proper trial i'm talking about someone who said this is going to cure covid i've got a vaccine for you come and get it and it wasn't fda approved it wasn't researched nothing so they're just falsifying it just to make the money yeah yeah and on the basis that people are scared yeah on the basis that there is a market opportunity out there and that people are willing to pay for it. Yeah, it makes me think about some of the the consultants that you see going into companies, and and all they do, they go in rather than having a product to deliver, they do whatever the sales pitch is, and then regurgitate the information they get from the company, and then spat it out back at them, and and just get just get paid for giving them their own information back in a different format. Yeah, you're totally right, Paul. We've been training uh, consultants for over 20 years to use our tools, and we've watched what they've done with organizations. So I think it's a shared responsibility. In part, the organization is saying, we've got this pain, you're around, you say you can fix it, okay, do it. Um, and the consultant says, hey, they want spiral dynamics, we provided them with the tools, okay, now what? And I would say probably 90, 95% of the consultants that we've trained, um, we don't allow them to use our flag because we assume that they're going to be working with their clients in their own zone of expertise. And what we've seen is they don't do the work to upgrade their skills, to keep on top of it, to delve deeper into the material and clients think they're quote, getting some spiral dynamics and they're not doing a deeper investigation. We've got fakes uh, around Europe, people saying that they're doing spiral dynamics training when they shouldn't be. So, um, so how, do you, how do you actually do your due diligence and do your supplier approval? Because one, um, one of the core mechanisms that we use for, for uh, identifying and preventing the access of falsified medicines is you, is you do your due diligence with your suppliers. Yeah, I look, 
This is so an organization looking to hire a spiral dynamics consultant can call us or contact us or send an email and say, hey, is this person trained? Yeah. Um, so we'll very quickly and e easily be able to locate them and say, yes, they are or no, they aren't. Um, but if it's not spiraldynamics.com or spiraldynamics.org, we've got the, you know people falsifying things as well. Um, a few weeks ago, we found uh, some Russians um, hawking, quote, a spiral dynamics test, right? So we had to contact LinkedIn, we had to do a takedown notice, um, and we can't, we can't see all of those, right? It's like playing whack-a-mole. So there's the educate, there's the educate the, uh, there's the educate the consumer. <laughs> Makes me think I should be whacking the, whacking the, the, the fin on the, on the goldfish. <laughs> well, look, there's, there is a, um, exactly what you're saying. There's this view, there's this belief, there's this mindset of fake it till you make it, mm. right? That's what consultants are taught. That's what managers are taught. It's become a pervasive meme. And one of the things I keep hearing is the, well, what do you call the doctor who graduates at the you know, bottom 10% of his class? A doctor, yeah. right? Well, I don't think that you know, somebody should be giving themselves a pass because they graduated the bottom 10%. They really should say, you know, I'm at the bottom 10%. I'm going to do everything I can to up level my skills. Yeah. And I think that that's what we need to be doing constantly. But, you know, you've got people with the fixed mindset and a growth mindset. The growth mindset people are struggling and working to get to the top of their field. And the fixed mindset people are like, well, I'm right. And I know that I'm good. And I promise you I'm good. Mm -hmm. And they're not even willing to see that they're not. Actually, the Dunning-Kruger effect, um, that particular bias, the experts at the top 12% of their field rate themselves as average. <laughs> the people at the bottom 25% rate themselves as expert. <laughs> That's, um, that's a bit scary. It's all like this weird twisted logic. Yeah, it doesn't make sense to me. I know I, I, I struggle to stop learning. I've, um, I, I started back in 1986 and I haven't stopped yet. I just, done, well, I just finished my MBA last year. That was interesting. <laughs> I know, congrats on that. <laughs> Thank you. I've, I've never been a believer in fake it till you make it. I just, uh, it's never something I've got into. Well, it always rubbed me the wrong way as well, you know, and I think part of it is, look, there are a lot of people who have great skills and talent, they don't have confidence, Yeah. right? So this is kind of a, a way to help people who do have talent to get a little bit more confident, right? But that's very different from faking your skills or faking meds or faking uh, knowledge that... Uh, it can really cause people to take a wrong direction and have tremendous loss. Mm. Yes, I think we're going to have to stop there because that reminds me about some <laughs> tremendous things that have, have, have been caught out with people that don't actually know what they're doing. Time for more in a next episode. Yeah. <laughs> That's... A cliffhanger, Paul. <laughs> I want to know. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about it next time. Some of the things that uh, you find people don't necessarily know what they're doing until you actually go and see them. So that's Paul Palmer. And Natasha Tudor-Vicowen. Thank you, Natasha. Thanks, Paul.